Hey travelers, I got an interesting one for you today. We talked a bit previously about hardware degradation and factors that influence hardware life, what you could do to help control and maximize it. I'll link that up here if you didn't see it. But today we're going to extend that topic and talk about degradation with actual numbers from my GPUs. I have a fair number of these FTW3 3070s. They've been running for around 14 months now, and I got numbers I will actually go over to see how these fared over that period of time. In addition, we'll talk about my other GPUs so far, what issues, failures, and things like that that I've had so far. I've been mining since 2014, GPU mining for about two years now, and I had a pretty small farm for quite some time, but more or less recently, a year and a half ago or so, expanded it to a little bit bigger to the point where it you know, needs its own section of the house to be able to cool it and deal with the noise. Now, when I first got these cards, I tuned them so that they would have approximately one hardware error for every 1,000 valid submitted shares. So you can see here the hardware errors for the submitted shares. So 26,000 or so submitted, 23 invalid. And it's more or less the same across the board. I found that for these GDDR6 cards, especially 3070s, they seem to be happy to produce errors and be relatively stable. You can have a considerable amount of hardware errors on these and the system doesn't lock or restart none of those issues it keeps on chugging along which isn't true for some cards like the 3080s with gddr 6x and even my 5700 xt and my 6800 those cards when you start getting hardware errors it's a very very bad sign and it probably is very unstable uh, you might have one and the system will crash and lock randomly whereas these they'll produce a bunch you could have hundreds and the system's probably still stable Maybe. I mean, if it's too far, it'll be unstable, but generally they're actually pretty good. So I found that with memory intensive algorithms like Dagger Hashimoto for Ethereum, which I'm currently still running on these cards, you want to get as much memory bandwidth as you can, but hardware errors are not paid for. You don't get anything out of them, right? So you want to produce valid shares, but you also want to make sure you're getting the most out of the hardware. So I found that about one error for every thousand valids is about right. And it takes a little while to make sure you're stable enough. This is a you know, 20 day uptime. I'd more or less recently got settled on these timings on the, on the clock speeds. So I'll talk about the numbers and we'll go over it. This is this rig over here. I'll move over to rig number two. It's this one with 3080. It's got three miners running, but you know, you can see most of these don't have a lot of errors except this one 3070 and Oh boy, we got hardware on the 3080. Yeesh. All right, I'll go over to this rig over here. We'll take a look at the miner in it. This one's been up for only 12, 13 days, right? Fairly uniform, relatively speaking. Pretty close to one hardware error for every 1,000 submitted shares. And now this guy, it's got two miners running. These actually both have different memory. And yeah, close enough on these, right? Decent enough. And now I have numbers with these. So when I got these, I tuned them. And more recently, I tuned them around 12-ish months later because it took me some time to get them dialed in initially. And so we have the initial offset and the revised, the current offset. And there's the difference between them for all these 3070s. I computed that as a percent difference. And now be aware, since these are offsets and not actual clock, I added in the actual clock so that this percent difference shows you the difference this offset changed over the total actual memory clock. Because this is just how much you're boosting it over the base clock, right? So this is the actual difference. And this is very close to the percent difference you would get in hash rate. So if this percent difference is 0.18, you would expect around 0.2% reduction in hash rate. And inevitably the hardware is going to degrade to some extent. And you could see it when you push it right to the edge like this. And it's hard to say how linear it's going to be. It could very well be that in another year, these numbers are about the same, or in another year, they're twice as bad or three times as bad, or it's barely noticeable, right? It could be that there's a sharp degradation and then it smooths out, or it could be you get a bathtub curve and then it shoots back up at some point, or it could be it shoots down and it stays flat forever until the hardware fails. It's hard to speculate. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe if you know, you let me know in the comments, but 
In my experience, you're going to continue to see some minor degradation over time. I'm not particularly sure how much it's going to change. I haven't done this before, but this I think is interesting data and we'll talk about it, right? So you can see these numbers. This is one card and this is the after. And on average, these changed about 21 megahertz. So 21 megahertz out of 8,000 or so, it's not a lot, quarter of a percent. The minimum being zero, and those were on the cards that were running 1,500. So clearly that just means that they were stable at 1,500, and that's as high as it goes. And, well, maybe they still degraded, most likely, but you can't see it because they weren't running on the edge because you couldn't put them to the edge. And the maximum some degraded is 35. So there's a 30, a 35, right? It'd be interesting to see if there's actually any correlation with clock speeds. It doesn't really seem to be. It doesn't look like the ones that are higher clocks really degraded more or less. And of course, these numbers aren't perfect because um, you know they're dialed in by hand, and it's it's more of an art than a science to get them just right. It takes a really long time, like 30 days plus, to be able to get very confident uh, offset numbers to make sure you're at like one per thousand, and it doesn't need to be that close, so it isn't. But you can see really minor degradation overall. We're averaging, we'll call it a half a percent, quarter percent or so degradation. Um, really, I would consider more or less insignificant, not substantial. So over the 14 months or so that these cards were running, we dropped a quarter percent in hash rate. And now if you didn't run the clocks tuned in to the five megahertz or so like I do, you wouldn't even see that. Um, if you're just running Hive and you set 1200 to every card, you probably wouldn't even see degradation. Although it's still occurring, your hash rate wouldn't really change because the cards aren't producing more errors, probably, as long as you weren't on the edge before. But the degradation will occur no matter what, whether or not you see it. And I think it's interesting to be able to point it out and see how they're behaving. And that's sort of the reason why I did this. Um, I wanted to be able to see how the hardware was performing. I wanted to be able to make sure that it was on the edge and there was no more left in it. And it's easy enough to do, especially if you have cards that are more or less all the same. Um, it's pretty easy to dial them in. And um, once you start figuring out how this particular type of card likes to behave, um, usually you can speculate pretty easily what you need to boost up or down to be able to get just the right uh, hardware rate or the hardware error rate. Uh, however, initially it can be problematic because some cards behave differently. But either way, I think it's pretty fair, pretty reasonable degradation, very minor. And these cards had a reasonably cushy life. I'm not entirely sure how conditions will impact it. Presumably higher temperatures may elevate the degradation, but I don't have the data for that. And other than that, the remainder of my cards, these are newish. I think I had them eight months or something like that. The rain in my cards have all been working fine. I haven't had any hardware failures on my GPUs. The only trouble I've had was my 5700 XT here. It's a reference card. I've had this three years, I think. Um, this was actually in an all-in-one, or a pre-built, I should say. And uh, I ripped it out when I figured out that GPU mining was very profitable. <laughs> kind of snuck up on me. But um, this guy's been hashing away for some time. This is. Yeah, this is my oldest card, and um, it somewhat more recently started to become unstable. This system would lock or post uh, hardware errors on this card and say that this GPU zero is locked. Um, now it was BIOS modded. I subsequently, after all the issues, I uh, reverted back to the stock BIOS because I couldn't get it stable. And the memory on this was always junk. With the BIOS mod, the, the strap up copy, I could never get this stable at stock memory clocks. I actually had to do like a half strap up copy and I put the timings from the standard to the to the lower frequency one. I cut them in half and I put that on there. So it was tighter timings in stock but not as tight as the typical strap up copy mod. And I still had to put the memory speeds down from stock to get that card to stable. Um, so I actually had to modify the BIOS to be able to allow the memory speed to go below stock defaults. Yeah, so I think that card's just kind of junk and it's been running fine for you know, a month or two where I needed to reboot this rig, but I've had a handful of times where the system locked because this GPU was unstable and had issues. So other than that guy, all my other cards, no issues, no troubles. I haven't had a single hardware failure. 
not a single power supply or anything. The only thing I failed was my breakout boards, which I did another video about that. But yeah, these parallel minor X11 amps have been very problematic. And well, a lot of people have experienced the same thing. I'll do a video in the near future talking about an improved repair and modification for these guys. But um, after the modification, they work just fine. So, eh. And they do have a revised version. And now they're putting a warranty sticker on the thing. Yeah, questionable. But other than that, yeah, my hardware's been running pretty good. No troubles, no issues. If you have any comments for a future video, please let me know in the comments below. And maybe you have some experience yourself with hardware degradation over time. I'd like to hear about it. I'm interested in these sorts of things. Let me know that as well. But until next time, stay ashen.